let's see how you can persist Pina stores between page loads. So I've got here a very simple example, a counter. This is the store, pretty straightforward. We've got a state with a count and then an action, which it's an increment. The only thing that it does, it just increments count. And let's see this in action. We've got here, we're importing it. And as you can see, it works. If I refresh the page, it's not persisting. I'm going to show you first how you can do this by yourself without using any external library. And then we're going to see how you can use an external library to get this done. Pina has something called plugins. The way that you can create a plugin for Pina, it's pretty simple. So we're going to over here, uh, first of all, let's just extract Pina. We're going to do this over here. Uh, but normally you would have like a separate folder where you create like plugins and inside that you store all your plugins. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's just uh, create it over here. Let's just call this Pina. Now let's just attach a plugin to Pina. We do that using the use and then over here it takes an R function and then over here it takes a context. Let's just console log this to see that it's working. And as you can see over here, we've got the context we can we do have access to app options pina and store we will see that later how we can use those so we want to persist these stores every single time that we make a change so let's just add that and the way that we're going to be doing that is using local storage you could use technically cookies but for the sake of, of this tutorial let's just keep it at local storage we also want to sync that storage that's coming from local storage to our Pina store. So let's just add that also. Let's start by listening if there is any change inside each store. The way that we can do that is context. We do have access to something called store and then we can subscribe and subscribe takes an R function, which is gonna have two parameters. The first one being the mutation and then the second one being state. Let's just console log both and once we make a change, we do get over here. The first one is the mutation. And then the second one is the state. And as you can see, count is equals to one. And that's the updated state, the new state. Once we have access to state, the only thing that we have to do is just save this new state to our local storage. To do that, we need to provide a key value, but we don't have a, the key. We only have the value, which is going to be the state. And the key is going to be the name of the store. In this case, if we go to counter, we do see the name of this store is called counter. So to grab that, we can do that by accessing this context again, store ID equals to context that store and that over here ID. And if we console log this, we do see over here the counter. Now that we have the key and the value, we can just save it window dot local storage dot state item. And then over here, the key is going to be store ID and that the value is going to be the state. But there is a thing. We cannot save this as an object. We do have to parse it or stringify it depending if we're getting the data from local storage or we're saving it. And for that, I'm going to just create a very simple over here, a helper object called serializer. And that's going to have two methods, serialize, which is going to be just JSON dot stringify and then deserialize which is going to be json dot parse and with this we can start using this serializer and we're going to serialize this since it's an object and we want to save it as a as a string and then over here state and with that we should be good to go now let's just refresh this go to our local storage and as we can see, local storage doesn't have anything. Now let's just press this. And as you can see, it's being saved over here. But if we refresh, the state inside Pina is not being updated. We're not grabbing this. And that's what we're going to be doing now. That's the part sync store from local storage. So let's start by doing that. The way that we can do that is pretty simple. It's doing actually the opposite of it. So let's just use our serializer and then deserialize because this is going to be coming as a string and we do want to make it an object. So this realize that's going to take one argument, which is going to be window, local storage, get item, and then the name of the key, which is going to be store ID. And with this, 
we're gonna save it into a variable called from storage. The thing with this is that we have to take into consideration that it could be null. It could be the first time that we are basically running this. So we have to take that into consideration from storage. So if the value is true, we do want to perform something. And that's the part where we are syncing with our Pina store. And the way that we can do that is using context again. And then over here, we do have access to something called store. And then we can do patch. Patch takes only one argument, which is going to be the from storage. Before running this, let's just console log this. We do see counter, which is coming over here from this store ID. Let's just remove this. And then we have count. And then we can see the, the state, which is the one that's coming from the local storage. So if we go to local storage over here and we change this to something like 20, we go back, we refresh, we'll see that count 20 coming from the local storage. So now we can get rid of this and we can do the syncing part, a context store patch, refresh this. And as you can see, it's showing over here. We can increment this, we refresh the page and that's working. And that's how you persist your data inside local storage between page refreshes and also sessions. Since this is saved in local storage, it's going to persist there. I wanted to show you how you can do this without using any library because I think that it's very important to know how these things are done and what are they doing under the hood. This is a very simplified example. And the thing with this is that it might not be covering all the edge cases. So you might want to use a library. There's this library, Pina Plugin Persisted State, which it's pretty up to date. It supports Vue 3 and also, as far as I can see, also Nux 3, which is great. The only thing that you have to do is just install it and then you can start using this. We can, let's just get rid of this and use this library. So let's just import it real quick. And now we don't see that's working. And the reason why is because we have to add something else over here. We need to add a key called persist and equals true. And now if we refresh this, we can see that's working and it's actually doing the exact same. We can see that that's incrementing and it's working. And this of course will work for multiple stores. For the sake of this tutorial, I only did it with one store, but you can do this with as many stores as you want. The only thing that you have to do is add this persist through and now it's working. I'm going to be linking this library in the description down below and if you like this video, if you want to see more content related to Vue, Express, Laravel, some GraphQL, just make sure to subscribe, press that bell icon and see you in the next one. Bye.